Remember, we have nothing, not one shred of evidence that ties Silverman to this so-called Mansion House murders. Except we know we did them. Yes, Slade, which is why this is a watch and wait operation. We only move in if we think it's going to run, understood? Yes, Chief. Right, Chief. Slade. With you all the way, Chief. Well, that makes a change. Right, let's go. Something's wrong. He's on to us. No, that is not possible. Chief? Stay where you are. He's gonna make a run for it. I'm going in. No! sodium hydroxide, but I don't think he'd eaten it. It's in the report, sodium hydroxide. You find it in soap. In my office, Slade. Wait a minute, Chief. This is... Wait a minute. I have been waiting for months. And now what do we have? 
thousands of pounds worth of damage, two people in hospital, and not only do we not make an arrest, we don't even have a body to put on the mortuary slab. We're still dredging the river. Oh, yes. And with your luck, Slade, Silverman will probably float downstream and turn up at the local regatta. Chief. What happened? You knew we were there. It was a complete balls up. Slade went you. after Silverman. Oh, you felt it. So that's why you disobeyed my orders and destroyed the entire operation, because you felt it. Chief. Not now, Turner. You type up that report and then you get out of here. Oh, you're suspending me again? Oh, no, I'm not suspending you. This time you are out for good. Who are you? It's just this. Which has been completely unreasonable. Silberman was a monster. You wait till you see the papers tomorrow morning. He'll be an innocent victim and I'll be the monster. Grisham's overreacting. I mean, nobody is asking the most obvious question. What was Silberman doing at the station? Holly, please, if I could turn back the clock and go and ask him, I would, but I can't because he's dead. So if you don't mind, I've got some typing to do. Bad luck, Slade. Yeah. Um... Are you going to have a leaving party? Hey, Holly. Hey, Danny. Hello, Molly. Kenny. Has a package arrived for me? Yeah, it came this morning. Could you get it for me now? Yeah. UCX Electronics. That's the one. The, the man said it was a bi-dimensional transmuter. Is that what you were expecting? Yes, that's right. Excuse me for asking, but what exactly would you use a bi-transmutable transmuter for? To dry my hair.
remember, we have nothing, not one shred of evidence that ties Silverman to this so-called Mansion House murders. Platform's all up that way. How many M's in plummeted? Two. You sure? Hmm. You double the M on the monosyllable if it comes after a prefix beginning with a vowel, provided it isn't a long vowel or an R. Silverman's car fell into the river. Here, Nicky. Fancy a tenner on a challenger's cup. What? Mr. Cass. 40 to 1. I've got a tip. I don't bet. And his horses don't win. What was the last tip you gave me, Morris? Limping boy? Or was it bag of bones? <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna miss you. Hmm. Slade. I suddenly thought to myself, what was Silverman doing at the station? He certainly wasn't there to take a train. Why not? Because he had his car parked outside. So then I asked, what else do you get at the station? Answer, left luggage, and that's why I decided to check it out. And this is what you found? This knife? I've managed to lift Silverman's fingerprints off the hilt, and there are at least three different blood types on the blade. It's the knife he always used. What more evidence could you ask for? All right, Slade. You may be off the hook this time, but I'll be watching you. Thanks. What you did. Well, that's OK. Just took some lateral thinking. Wish I could believe that. What do you mean? Well, I just can't work out how you did it. There was no way you could have got to the station, checked the left luggage and got back again in half an hour. I was lucky with the traffic. You were there, weren't you? Where? At the station this morning. Oh, no. I saw you. But at the same time, I knew you were also here. Strange, isn't it? You get to know someone. You like them. You trust them? I can't tell you what you want to know. Why not? Because I haven't told anyone. You haven't told anyone what? You wouldn't believe me. Try me. <coughs> A time machine. <laughs> this is completely confidential. You mustn't breathe the word to anyone. Holly, come on. Everyone knows time travel is not possible. Oh, you believe it is? My father was Frederick Turner. Professor Frederick Turner. Was? No, he's... He's gone. I'm just trying to finish what he began. 
That's the only reason I'm working in the department. I have to earn enough money to carry on his work, experiments and time travel. Do you go into the future? Don't be silly. How can you travel into what doesn't exist? Oh. Oh, you go back into history? Well, not history. A few hours. A few days at the most. You wouldn't understand. No, I'll tell you what I don't understand. Why you're telling me all this. What? Well, I thought you were going to tell me the truth. But I... <laughs> oh, forget it. I shouldn't have wasted my time. Never mind, Holly. You can always travel back and give the whole conversation a miss. Slade. Guy Lombard. You know, Lombard Aviation. Never heard of him. Lombard Aviation helped Frank Brittle build the first gas turbine jet engine back in the 30s. Now they design small commercial jets, you know, like the, uh, the Shadow and the FK-7. And now Lombard's dead. It's going to be my first suicide. How do you know that's suicide? Um, gun in hand, bullet in head, locked door. It looks like a textbook case. Depends which textbook you read. After lunch, Lombard came in here, locked the door, the keys in his pocket. There was one shot. What time? Two o'clock exactly. There's a wife and a son. They heard the shot, broke the door in, and that's how they found him. Hmm. Anyone else in the house? Yes, his partner, Mark Redding. He came in a few moments later. And the door was definitely locked? Mm-hmm. What about these French windows? Mm, locked also, from the inside. The wife and the son are downstairs from the Sort it out. Right, okay. Whose gun was it? Barbara Lombard's. She kept one in her bedside table. It isn't there now. Was there a note? No. Unusual. But otherwise, I'd say it was a textbook case. Precisely. Well, I don't agree. Lombard was about to sign a deal with the Japanese consortium. They were coming to the house tonight. And? And it would have made him almost 25 million pounds richer. I see what you mean. A strange time to blow your brains out. Exactly. Look into it, Slade. Start with the caterers. Hmm? A Mr and Mrs Wilson, they'd been called in to do a smart dinner after the deal had been signed. Yeah, I saw their van outside. What about them? They were trying to leave in a hurry. I've got Morris keeping an eye on them in a room along there. Ah, Morris. Lovely to be working with you again. Are they in there? Ah, great work, Morris. You've been guarding an empty bathroom. Slade? What? A clue. Thrilling. G. Avani's. That's where you had lunch. Oh, yeah. Have you been in here? No. Then how did it get here? What's happened to the Wilsons? I never saw them. I was told to stand outside. And you've been outside all the time? Yeah. Well, I had a call of nature a couple of minutes ago, but they wouldn't have known that. A call of nature? <laughs> well, I couldn't come in here, could I? That's them, Morris. Get after them. Mickey, hey, get a description of the band alert. Right. Wilson! What are you doing up here? Sorry, you're talking to me. Well, what are you doing? What's going on? My name's not Wilson. 
What do you mean? You were here this morning. Who are you? I'm Michael Lombard. You know perfectly well. Wait a minute. Are you saying you've seen me here before? You came here this morning for the catering. Please don't throw your frozen peas at me. I just want to talk. I've decided that I believe you. Good for you. Now, what I mean is, maybe this morning I was a little... Rude? Hasty. I mean, you know, UFOs, ghosts, time travel. Have to keep an open mind, don't you? Right. OK, then, so if it's all right with you, I'll, uh, well, I'm ready to give it a go. The answer's no. Oh, come on, no, please. no, no. I'm not even two minds about it then. Oh, excuse me, sir. Did you hear the result of the Challenger's Cup? Yeah, I missed a catch, 40 to 1. Wow. Holly, come on, what are you afraid of? If your machine really works. Oh, it works. Well, that's what you say. But if you're such a hotshot scientist, why don't you do the one thing it all comes down to? Prove it. Is this it? Yes. Looks like a... Oh, spare me the inane comparisons, please. How far will it send me back? No way of saying. Could be a few hours, could be a week. A week? How will I get it back again? You wait seven days. Simple as that. You just live the same seven days twice. Do I get to meet myself? Not unless you want to cause a temporal schism. Oh dear, I don't want that. What else do I need to know? We have to be back at the machine at the same moment, and I mean the same half second that we left. What? If we're late getting back, we'll be trapped in a loop of infinity, always living the same days, travelling back in time and doing it all again. What's this? It's crucial to the whole thing. Oh, it's a car accident. It's Danny. You know him? Yeah. Do you want to go down? Leave you here on your own? I don't think so. Excuse me. You want me to prove it? Fine. I'll prove it. But this is a once only Slade. What shall I do? Nothing. Just sit down there. Here? Look, even assuming we do travel back far enough, there is nothing you can do to prevent this crime from happening. Are you going to try and stop me? Time will stop you. If something has happened, it'll happen. It's one of the laws of time. Was it? What did you do? Photocopiers? 8.25 in the morning. It's given us 10 hours. 8.25? That's what my watch says, too. Just get this into your head. This watch is synchronized with the machine. It'll beep once when we have an hour left, then continuously for the last three minutes. We have to be back in this room by then. Right. You say so? Well, come on, then. What are we waiting for? You're Danny? Yeah. This is your car? Slade. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, Danny, about a minute ago... That wasn't we... a minute ago. 
Oh, no. Sorry. Be careful how you drive. This is incredible. It's fantastic! I've travelled in time. You did it. It wasn't me, it was my father. I'm here with you now, but I'm also in the office. And Guy Lombard, he must be still alive. Wow! Have you ever thought what you could do with a machine like that? Oh, no. I'm not interested. Oh, come on. Don't you want to know who killed him? No. Well, I do. And we'll start there. Mr. Wilson? Yes? I see you've made sushi. Yes. Who are you? Department of Health. You're under arrest. What? We can't do this. Yes, we can get in. What? Get in. You tied those people up. You can't do that. Is that how you always work? I'm very glad to see you, Mr. Wilson. Did you do the sushi? Yes, it's, uh, it's in the van. Good. You can start by cooking lunch. Let's get a taste of what you can do. We eat at 1.15. Mrs. Wilson can do her cheese souffle, can't you, my darling? What? Cheese souffle? Oh, right. And you can bring me up some coffee. Might as well use you while you're here. Right. Guy. Ah, there you are. Where have you been? Having my nails done. Another action-packed day. This is Barbara, my wife. How do you do? She'll show you the kitchen. <clears throat> All set for tonight? Yes, dear. These people are important. Make sure you don't talk too much. <clears throat> this evening matters a lot to my husband, Mr. Wilson. I'm sure. The contract will be signed at seven. You can serve the champagne then. We'll eat at eight. I understand your husband's selling his company to the Japanese. <laughs> That's completely confidential. Your husband mentioned it just now. <clears throat> Did he? Well, it's important everything goes smoothly. Guy has a. Uh... He can be quite bad tempered. Mother. What's going on? Well, this is my son, Michael. These are the caterers, Mr. and Mrs. Uh... Wilson. So it's still going ahead. No 11th hour miracle. Michael. No, 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 no. Great. Champagne and caviar. Only have to admit that when the old man screws you, he does it with style. Excuse me. Michael, darling, I need to talk to you. Right. You better get started on the old souffle, then, Mrs. W. I can't cook. I beg your pardon. Are you telling me you can build a time machine, but you can't cook a cheese souffle? You've got your priorities all wrong. Right, now then, I wonder where they keep this coffee. This isn't just about money, Guy. What about the company? Of course it's about money. You might be my partner, Mark, but you're a fool. Yeah, but the Japanese aren't interested in aviation. They never have been. They'll just take the new engine designs and close down everything. That's not my problem. Come. Ah, my coffee. About time, too. Just put it down there. What about the people who work for us, Guy? We've got people who've been with us for 20 years. People who worked with your father. My father gave the company to me, and I'm selling it. That's all right. You can go. Look, I say we hang on. The FK-72 is going to be the quietest engine on the market. And once the new regulations come in... The answer's no. I won't let you do this, guy. I simply won't let you do it. And how are you going to stop me? Oh, don't waste my time, Mark. Get out of here. How's it going? 
It's in the oven. I hope it's better than your toast. Oh. Right, it's five to one. You serving this lunch or what? I thought that was your job, Mr. Wilson. If they ask, tell them I've gone to polish the chopsticks. Whereas, in fact... The gun. According to Grisham, Barbara Lombard kept the gun on the bedside table, and I'm going to get rid of it. It was Grandpa's business, not yours. He would never have allowed you to sell out. I do not talk business at the lunch table. I don't believe you're doing this. Guy, you did promise, Michael. What do you know about anything if you can't wear it or eat it? That's a horrible thing to say. Souffle. much for your laws of time. Fine, okay, you've proved your point, now let's go. Hang on a minute. What? The lamp. What about it? It's not broken. When I got here, I mean, when I get here, that glass was smashed. So it gets broken, so what? Yeah, but how? We've got to go. Slade. What's your game? Mr. Lombard, I, I was just... I know what you were doing. You're not a caterer at all, are you? How did you guess? Well, it's lucky I'm always ready for petty thieves. You've got a gun. A second gun. What are you talking about? Two guns. Mr. Lombard, you must listen to me. I came here to warn you. Warn me? About what? Uh, it's um, <clears throat> a bit hard to explain. Well, I don't want to know. I think you do. I do not. One more word out of you and I'll shoot you where you stand. Don't move. I said stay there! Yes. Mr. Morata, one moment, please. I should call the police. Normally I would, but I can't be dealing with scum like you. Not today, of all days. So get out of my house and think yourself lucky. Mr. Lombard, you've got it all wrong. I'm only going to give you this one chance. One chance, right. OK, right. Mr. Morata? Yes. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing you, too. The papers are all ready. But we may have to go out to meet. Where are they? Who? The others, Barbara Lombard and the rest of them. I don't know. She, she's outside. I think the partner went upstairs. What's happened? Two guns. He caught me in his study. Look, we've got to find out where everyone is. He's going to be shot in four minutes. I know. What do you want? Mr Lombard?
Slate? 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 Oh, Michael. Oh. No, it's okay. I'm all right. Okay. I've been looking everywhere for you. What happened? Oh. Someone shot me. Someone tried to kill you? No. No, that's the odd thing. They, uh... They weren't aiming. They just fired. They smashed the lamp. Did you see who shot Lombard? Hmm? Ah. Uh, oh, that's marvellous. I don't know what That's really, really brilliant. Slade, the local police are here, and so is Grisham. That means you're on your way, too. Do you understand me? We've got to go. He was always so kind to me, so generous. I still can't believe. It's all right, Mother. And did you ever argue with Mr. Lombard, Mr. Reddy? Never. No, no, no. We always saw things much the same way. Will you be taking over the company now he's gone? No. No, that would be me. It was um, very much what my father wanted. Slade. Will you relax, Holly? We've got plenty of time. It's a 30 minute drive. Can I help you, sir? Officer. Is this uh, your van? Yes. We're the caterers. But it looks as if dinner's off. So we're going. So we're off, too. I'm under orders, sir. Nobody is leaving the house. Officer. Oh. Get in. Oh, Get in! Oh, no, the keys. I left them in the kitchen. Wait! Yeah, I'll tell you. You're not going anywhere. The caterers? Yes, ma'am. Right, well, Slade can deal with them when he gets here. Morris, you better go and stand guard outside the room. Yes, Chief. All right, Whitby, you can go downstairs. Yes, sir. By the way, is there a bathroom up here? That is the bathroom, sir. That's Morris. Yeah. You do realise if he opens the door, we are finished. There's got to be a way out of here. What makes you so sure? Because we weren't here when I arrived. Speaking of the devil, here I am now. What did you say would happen if I met myself? It could be catastrophic. A clash of two temporal dimensions. Only catastrophic, eh? Right, there's got to be a way out. Have you got a handkerchief or something? Thanks. We don't leave any fingerprints, do we? You're right, it's too far. One hour, and if we don't get back... What? The loop of infinity, I told you. Oh, yes, of course. But I didn't tell you about my father. Why? What happened to him? The last time he travelled, he didn't get back. He was late, Slade, and he got trapped. And that is exactly what's going to happen to us. This call of nature, he told me. It's 
them? Yes. George! Don't move. Just don't move. Slade, get us out of here. Right. It's a white van, number plate unknown, but it does have a knife, a fork, and a spoon on the side. And uh, actually, it seems to have come back again. George Wilson? Yeah? You want a caterer? Yes. Good. You're under arrest. <laughs> Why are we leaving it here? We can't leave it outside your flat, can we? I think a white van with a knife, fork and spoon on the side of it might be slightly conspicuous. Fine. But we've only got ten minutes. We'll be OK, as long as we're not seen. There he is! Come on! Wait! Listen, spit up. Meet back at the flat. It was our fault. What do you want to do? Go back and exchange phone numbers? We haven't got time. Two minutes. not injured anymore. Hmm? Your head. It's gone. How come? Parallel dimensions. You weren't injured when you left, so you're not injured now. You know, you really are a genius. And you are completely irresponsible. We could have been killed. It's fantastic. You travelled in time. I travelled in time. We did it. I'm sorry I didn't find out what you wanted to know. Oh, don't worry. I found out enough. Chief. What do you want, Slade? Shouldn't you be out investigating the Lombard case? Yes, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I thought you might be interested in this. What is it? It's the charge sheet, Chief. That's a bit quick, isn't it? Who have you arrested? That's Wilson. What's he doing here? It's not Wilson. His name's Slade. What? He's a detective? Yeah. yeah but he can't be. He was there. Yeah. And so was Father Christmas. Come on. He was there. He was there before I did it. Before I even knew what Lombard was already dead at 2 o'clock. Mark Redding had shot him using a silenced gun a few minutes earlier. But everybody heard one shot at two o'clock. No, that was the second shot. Redding sets everything up to look like suicide. Key in the pocket, doors and windows locked. He then fires a second shot, this time without a silencer, to bring Barbara and Michael Lombard into the room. And where's he? He's hiding behind the door. There was an alcove next to the shelving unit, so Barbara and Michael don't see him as they come into the room and up to the body. A moment later, he steps out, and it looks like he's just followed them in. Remarkable detective work, Slade. How did you work it out? 
Well, Redding was unlucky. His second shot just happened to hit a lamp in the garden, and I noticed the glass was broken, and that's when everything began to make sense. <laughs> a broken lamp? You worked it all out from a broken lamp? It just took a little bit of time. Nice food, expensive wine. Mm. You trying to get around me, Slade? Whatever gave you that idea? I'm beginning to know you. I was just wondering that if in future I... Never again. That was the deal. Yeah, that was the deal. So, thank you. Mmm, now that's what I call a cheese souffle. This is going to cost you a fortune. How can you afford to pay for it on your salary? Oh, I meant to tell you. I just happened to be passing a betting shot while we were away on our travels. Mr. Cass, 40 to 1. How could I resist? It doesn't work like that. Putting money on a horse knowing the result. You couldn't know the result because the race hadn't run yet. It's a paradox. So, that's a blank piece of paper. Mm. I did warn you. Time has rules, just like the rest of life. It won't let you cheat, and nor will I. Looks like you're going to be doing the washing up. I wonder if they let us cook. 